Let's dig in a little deeper, coming to you from Rodney's Publishing. Make sure to follow and listen close, because as soon as you think it's over, life hits you in the gut. Isn't it funny how the universe works? Shell, we began. He had dreams once. Dreams of a family, a little house with a porch swing, the scent of freshly cut grass on a Sunday afternoon. Thomas Miller was a simple man with simple desires. Now the only scent he knew was the stale air of his cell, the cold metallic tang a constant reminder of his confinement. Confinement for a crime he didn't commit. Fifteen years. Fifteen years he had spent staring at the cracked ceiling, counting the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, blending into an indistinguishable blur of despair. He was twenty-five when they took him away, a young man brimming with life. Now at forty he was a ghost, his spirit crushed under the weight of a wrongful conviction, a sentence he was still forced to serve. The world outside had forgotten about Thomas Miller, forgotten about the injustice that caged him, the life unjustly stolen. He was a forgotten number, lost in a system more concerned with finality than truth. He was living proof that sometimes the worst nightmare wasn't the crime itself, but the enduring punishment for a sin you didn't commit. The sirens wailed, a discordant symphony against the backdrop of a starless night, a young couple brutally murdered in their home, their dreams shattered. The community was shaken, fear seeping through the streets. The police, pressured by public outcry, zeroed in on Thomas. His alibi was weak, his demeanour shaken. The trial was a media circus. The jury delivered a guilty verdict. Thomas Miller was sentenced to death. Years passed. The case, once a raging inferno of public scrutiny, faded to smouldering embers. The victims' families, forever scarred by the tragedy, struggled to navigate their grief and anger. Thomas, buried under the weight of his sentence, clung to the fragile hope of exoneration. A young lawyer, Sarah Stevens, fresh out of law school, stumbled upon Thomas's case while reviewing cold cases for a pro bono project. Something about the case, a gut feeling, a nagging sense of unease, compelled her to dig deeper. She pored over the trial transcripts, the evidence, the witness testimonies, searching for a crack in the seemingly impenetrable wall of the prosecution's case. And then she found it, a discrepancy in the timeline, a witness statement conveniently omitted during the trial, a fingerprint at the crime scene that didn't match Thomas's. The seeds of doubt, sown years ago, began to sprout, fueled by Sarah's unwavering commitment to uncovering the truth. The bars had become his world, the cold, hard steel a constant reminder of his stolen freedom. Fifteen years, a lifetime for some, a blink of an eye for others. For Thomas, it was an eternity spent in purgatory, suspended between hope and despair. Days bled into weeks, weeks into months, months into years. He marked time by the sunrise and sunset glimpsed through the narrow window of his cell, by the clanging bars, the shuffling footsteps of the guards, the muffled sobs of fellow inmates. He clung to the routine, the mundane, the repetitive, for it was in the absence of sensation that he found a semblance of peace. He had missed birthdays, holidays, the changing seasons. He had missed the chance to fall in love, to start a family, to watch the sunset on a beach, to feel the warmth of the sun on his face. He had missed the simple joys of life, the moments that make up a life worth living. Fifteen years stolen, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. Section 5. A Glimmer of Hope The letter arrived on a day like any other, a plain white envelope bearing the return address of a legal aid organisation. Thomas, hardened by years of disappointment, approached it with cautious curiosity. As he read the words, his heart skipped a beat. A lawyer, Sarah Stevens, believed in his innocence. She was working on his case pro bono. Hope, a flickering flame long thought extinguished, rekindled in his chest. He clung to it, nurtured it, allowed it to grow, wary of letting himself believe, yet unable to resist the pull of its warmth. Sarah Evans was his lifeline, a beacon of hope in the desolate landscape of his prison cell. Sarah, driven by an unwavering sense of justice, threw herself into the case. She tracked down witnesses, reviewed evidence, piecing together the fragments of a truth long buried. 
she faced resistance, scepticism, and outright hostility. But she pressed on, fueled by the belief that everyone, even a man condemned to death row, deserved a chance at redemption. Section 6. The Truth Unveiled The advent of DNA technology offered a new avenue for Miss Stevens' investigation. She petitioned the court to allow for the testing of DNA evidence found at the crime scene, evidence that had been deemed inadmissible during the initial trial. The court, after much deliberation, granted her request. Weeks turned into months as they awaited the results. The wait was agonizing, each tick of the clock an eternity. Finally, the day arrived. The phone rang and Sarah held her breath as she answered. The voice on the other end, filled with a mix of disbelief and elation, confirmed what she had long suspected. The DNA evidence did not match Thomas Miller. It pointed to another suspect, a man who had since been convicted of similar crimes in a neighbouring state. The news spread like wildfire. The media, once eager to condemn Thomas, now clamoured for his exoneration story. The community, once united in their belief of his guilt, grappled with the unsettling realisation of their collective error. But for Thomas, none of it mattered. The truth, long suppressed, had finally come to light. He was innocent. Section 7. Justice Delayed, Justice Denied The euphoria of exoneration was short-lived. The court, while acknowledging the new evidence, hesitated to overturn Thomas's conviction. They cited legal complexities, procedural hurdles, the need for further review. Thomas, despite being cleared by irrefutable scientific evidence, remained imprisoned, his freedom held hostage by a system resistant to admitting its own fallibility. The victims' families, reeling from the news of Thomas's innocence, were thrown into a whirlwind of emotions. Their grief, once focused on Thomas, now became a tangled knot of confusion, anger, and a profound sense of betrayal. The system that had promised them justice had failed them twice, first by convicting the wrong man and then by delaying his release, even when his innocence was undeniable. The legal battle for Thomas's release dragged on, a tortuous process that mirrored the agonizing slowness of his initial years in prison. Every hearing, every motion, every legal maneuver felt like a Sisyphean task, pushing the boulder of justice uphill only to watch it roll back down. Section 8. A Broken System Exposed Thomas Miller's case stands as a stark reminder of the fallibility of the justice system. It lays bare the perils of a system more concerned with finality than truth. The media grappled with its own complicity in perpetuating a miscarriage of justice. The case became a lightning rod for discussions about wrongful convictions and the need for reform. The fight for Thomas's release continues, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. His story serves as a potent reminder that we are all stakeholders in the pursuit of a more just society. These are all fictional short stories and characters, written and published by Rodney Johnson. Other books of short stories include Brain Boxing, Crime Artist, Crime Fame, Fortune and Glory. Leave room for human errors. Subscribe to Rodney's Publishing on my YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.